In this use case, we are going to calculate precipitation anomalies based on CHIPS data. The CHIPS dataset is a daily dataset existing since 1981. As an example of how precipitation anomalies are calculated, let's assume that we want to calculate the precipitation anomaly for July 2021. Therefore, we need to know how the long-term mean of July precipitation looks like. In the case of CHIRPS data, we have to calculate the mean precipitation in July over all years since 1981. And then subtracting this mean from our investigation period, which is July 2021. The result is a precipitation anomaly, which has either positive or negative values. These positive values represent the rainfall in millimeters in this case, that have been received additionally to the long-term mean. On the other hand, negative values uh, show a deficit in precipitation compared to the long-term mean. We will write this script together and I will copy and paste some of those text blocks into this script. There are some parameters already given, which is the start and the end date. Those two variables provide our time frame. In this case, it is the 1st of January 2021, and our investigation time will end on the 1st July 2021. Remember that the first date is inclusive, so this date will be considered in our data, and the second date is exclusive, meaning that the 1st of July is not considered, but the day before. You can type in different dates for any time that you want to calculate the precipitation anomaly for. The other parameters is the min and max value. Um, those will be needed for visualization purposes uh, at a later time point. So let's start to write the script and I will copy and paste the first parts into this script. In the first line of code, we are going to deal with the image collection of the chips data. We are importing it into our script and then map a function over it, which clips our data to our area of interest, in short, AOI. However, we have not provided an AOI yet, so we have to draw one or import one uh, like a shapefile to your assets. However, we are going to draw a polygon in this case, or better, a rectangle. So you can choose between the polygon or the rectangle tool and draw a geometry around your area of interest. Afterwards, rename it to AOI. If you don't want to draw a new area of interest, you can also use the demo variable and uh, delete those two slash symbols in front of that variable. So now we have our area of interest and we clipped our image collection to our area of interest. Next, the script will center the map view to our AOI uh, before our script will actually start. So. Let's calculate the precipitation sum for our time frame provided here. Therefore, we filter our image collection, which is the CHIRPS image collection, by the start date and the end date that we provided, and calculate the sum out of those images lying in between those two days. This part sets some metadata information, which um, is nice to have in the background, but not crucial for this case now. The calculation of the long-term mean is a little bit more complex than calculating the sum of the uh, precipitation in our time frame, and we will need some more line of lines of codes here. Before we can calculate the long-term mean, we need some information to calculate it. The first information is the uh, difference of days between our start date and our end date. And this is done by calculating the difference based on a daily difference between those two dates. 
Now that we have the number of days that lie between our start and the end date, we need the start month, which we grab from our start date and get the month of the year. We also need the day of this month to calculate the long-term mean later. Besides those date information about our start date, we need some more information about the GIPS data itself. And to be more precise, it is information about for which years data, data exists. And we grab this information right from our image collection and only get the year of the first image and the year of the latest image available. Then we calculate a, li a list which contains all years in between those two years. Now we have all necessary information to calculate the long-term mean, which is done by the following function. This function calculates the long-term mean of those uh, time frames for each year. So we map over our list of years, which is all years for which GIPS data exists, and reconstruct a start date for each year with corresponding day and month information uh, to our time frame provided here. And now that we have a start and end date for each year of our data, we can sum this data up and turn this daily data into uh, a sum of precipitation within the time frame. The resulting image will only be exported or returned uh, from this function if there was data for all days uh, within the time frame. If there were like only 20 images for our time frame that should be maybe 60 days, so 60 images long, it will not be returned. Up to this point, we now have the precipitation sum for all years for the time frames. And with this last command here, we calculate the mean out of those summed images. And this function will return the long term mean for our time frame. So now we only have to calculate the precipitation anomaly by subtracting our current precipitation sum, which we have done here. And uh, subtract the, historic, the historical precipitation mean from our precipitation sum. And the last step is to visualize the data, which is done with the following lines of codes. We have a visualization variable, which provides uh, some information of how to visualize the data. And you can see that these min and max variables that we have set up at the very beginning of the script is called in this variable. And this will be necessary for the second video about this um, use case, but is not that important for the example now. And with a last statement, we are going to add our result, our precipitation anomaly to the map and give it a proper name by receiving some of its start and end information um, and put it into the name of the layer. So now we can already start the script by clicking on the run button. And our precipitation anomaly is displayed. You can get some more information about our specific locations by using the inspector and clicking on a location within your area of interest. Uh, for this location that I clicked on, the precipitation anomaly is minus 433, which is uh, 
433 millimeters of precipitation less than the long-term mean. In the second video, we are going to talk a little bit more about additional visualization settings and to get some more historical information about precipitation data.